Welcome to GeForce Interviews, where I have the privilege of interviewing GeForce member Whitney Weiser. She is an incredible friend and inspiration to me, and I am so excited for you to hear her story as well as her advice. Right now, we're doing a series on the COVID 19 how do we not only survive, but thrive during this time? And there's nobody better to interview than somebody that can help us level up our fitness and our health during this crazy time where a lot of us are in quarantine. Whitney's our girl. A little bit about her. Whitney is an entrepreneur, IFBB pro athlete and Olympian, a national physique committee bodybuilding judge and certified trainer and nutritionist. She's passionate about empowering people to live their best through fitness. She founded and hosts the only all-female NPC fitness competition, the NPC Nashville Fit Show which I will be competing in later this year. This competition gives women their own platform to shine and to be around like-minded, strong and supportive women in the process. Above all, she relishes the opportunity to inspire confidence and strength among these women. Again, I am one of them. She has changed my life and I am just so, so, so grateful for what you've done for me, what you've taught me and just the impact you've had on my life. I met her during the darkest time in my life and she kicked my butt into pulling it back together, not just with my mind, but in my health. And so I can read your accolades all day long. Again, you've been on so many stages. You're speaking all over the world. You are an incredible teacher and trainer, but I want to know, I want the viewers to hear how you really got into this. Why does health matter? And what's, what got you into this in the first place? Well, it's been a long journey. I've been into fitness basically my whole life. I played sports since I was nine years old, uh, basketball and all through the years. And um, I, I just I have always had a passion for what you can do with your body and your mind um, through fitness. So I started competing in 2009 and bodybuilding was just a whole new thing to me because I had already worked out. I had the, the physical aspect down, but tying in the nutrition part of it was like a whole nother level. So I started competing in 2009. Um, by 2011, I was competing at the national level and doing really well at the national level. However, by the end of 2011, um, I was laying in a hospital bed being told by doctors that I may never walk again. So the reason that I was laying in the hospital bed being told I may never walk again was because my ex-boyfriend uh, had run me over with his Denali SUV and left me in the parking lot basically to die um, because I didn't want to be with him anymore. So it crushed my spine, it crushed my, you know, my back, my ribs, um, and I had to have back surgery right away to have metal rods and screws inserted into my spine. Um, and I had to learn how to walk again from that. But um, just a few short years later, um, after being told I might never walk again, um, I'm, I not only turned pro in the sport of bodybuilding, but I am standing on the Olympia stage, which is, if you don't know what the Olympia is, it is like the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. So only the few best in the world qualify to make it to the Olympia. And I never even thought that I would be good enough to get to the Olympia, much less qualifying for it after I had gone through this devastating accident. So I'm looking out over the crowd of like thousands of people while I'm on this Olympia stage, just thankful to God that I never gave up on what I wanted to do with my life just because people said that I couldn't do it and it wasn't, there wasn't a way to do it. I never gave up no matter what. And from that, the point of that happening, that tragic event happening in my life, it just gave me even more determination to level up my fitness and my journey and redeem myself and what had happened to me and make it 10 times better. So through just trusting God and having faith to do it, I was able to accomplish that. So um, Girl, that story. That yeah. It's life changing. I mean, it's, it's hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. And we all are going through a painful time. Not most of us have not been run over by somebody who says that they love us. 
and we're not being told what can be some of the worst news you could ever hear, especially for somebody whose life can be around their fitness and their body. And, but we are going through a painful time. We are going through a crisis. We are going through mass amounts of loss. And to think about where we could be five years from now and how did we use this experience to get us there, to, to be 10X, like you just said, to, to be some of the tops in the world around the best of the best and, and to earn it by putting in the work. Like, what did we do now? How did we use this pain? How did we use this crisis and tragedy or whatever you want to call it? Right. to do that. And so I know that you've got the, the grace to be able to impart that in people. I would love to know because people are in not a hospital bed, but they're in a trying time right now. How can we go from our trying time to the Olympia stage? What are, what are some of the things that you learned that, that we could incorporate into our life to help us go from this to the next level? Um, so this, there's about four things that um, I incorporated. Um, the first thing would be learning to eat right. Okay. Uh, the second thing is just getting your body back right and being patient, but learning effective workouts. Number three would be having a supportive group of people around you that know your goals and can help hold you accountable. And number four and the most important one is mindset, having the right mindset to get there. Absolutely. So what are some things we can do to improve our mindset? So, and this is, as I train people, I see this all the time. People get so motivated and they start out so gung ho and they go to the extreme, like the first week or two. And then by the end of those two weeks, like they can't walk anymore. They're miserable on their diet because they probably wrote it themselves and they're starving to death. And so they quit. They that's, that always happens. The most important thing to remember is take it slow. Hmm. You didn't get out of shape um, over a two week period. You're not going to get back in shape over a two week period. That's good. So that's the most important thing to remember is take it slow baby steps because consistency, which I just posted about this on Instagram yesterday. I was like, consistency will beat every everything like hard work is great but if you don't consistently work hard you're not going to get there mm. um you can have the best strategy in the world to get mm. somewhere but if you're not implementing it every day and you're not consistent with it it's not going to work so consistency across the board is the most important thing and if that means you know you cut out one thing one unhealthy thing from your diet and you make pro you're still going to make progress you don't have to go from eating McDonald's every day to eating plain chicken and broccoli every day. You're going to be miserable. Cut out McDonald's one time that a day, and right. then you're still going to see progress. And so that's, that's my number one tip there is oh, take huge. I, I think you're one of the only trainers I've ever heard say that everybody else cut everything and it's just not realistic, oh. but taking those baby steps, you know, learning to walk again. If, yeah. if you've never worked out, it's taking it really slow. And you've, you've told me this before, it's treat it like therapy. Mm -hmm. If you can't walk, you have to do physical therapy to be able to walk again. If you've never worked out, take it slow. Don't hate yourself. Yeah. Don't be mad. Just start walking. And then later you'll run for five seconds. And then you'll run for 30 seconds. And you'll run for three hours eventually if you had to. But it's, it's like about mental thing for me too, because I had worked out my whole life. And so when I had to go back from square one, I mean, I couldn't even walk much less do a squat or deadlift or just go in the gym and do whatever I wanted. I had to be careful and my body didn't move the right, you know, the same way it did before. So I had to learn new ways to do things. It was like I was a kid again, learning to walk and learning how to work out again, which was mm -hmm. completely frustrating and a whole new experience to me. I would go in the gym and like halfway through a workout, just start crying because, uh -huh. you know, like I, it was, it sucked for a long time, trust me. But I had the, the mindset that I don't care how long this takes, like I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna keep going. And that's Ooh. the mindset it takes to, to get anywhere in life and to be successful yes. is it doesn't matter how long it takes. If you want it, you're going to keep going no matter what, no matter if you take one forward step and you want it, your goal was 50 steps, but you took one, that's still a step. 
So you have to look at it that way and approach everything that way. I'm going to steal that analogy and I'm going to apply it to being any kind of a business owner specifically right now. Maybe we were on top of the world before. Just lost what looks like everything. You may be starting all the way over and there's not one person affected. There's not one business affected. Even if you're Amazon, like, and you're still exploding, like it's hard for everybody. Yeah. And if you just have to start again, like you're a kid, you've been through it before on your entrepreneurial journey. Mm-hmm. You were successful before. You can do this again. You might have to have a totally different approach because your back doesn't move. Right. Well, I can't leave the house. So how do I do my service? How do I grow my business? How do I, bah, 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 like whatever it is, do it in the same way that Whitney rebuilt her life, her, her body and her mind. That's the approach we have to have. So I think the saddest thing that I have seen in this pandemic is the huge rise of domestic violence cases that are happening. People are cooped up. They're trapped now with the monster that's beating them. What would your message be, you know, as somebody who's overcome this, what would your message be to the people who are experiencing this right now? Oh, this is such a tough one for me. Um, and realizing that all these cases have gone up since everybody's been stuck inside. So my message would be to, these women and children just to love yourself uh, enough to put up boundaries on, you know, what is what you should tolerate and what you should not tolerate because there is, you don't deserve to be treated less than great in this life. And you've got to know when to leave. Like, yeah, we're stuck inside. You probably think that there's nowhere for you to go, but there is. There's resources, um, like the YWCA uh, is one. Um, Or just if if you trust somebody, if you know somebody that you trust, just to get you away from the situation, Um, especially for right now when we are just stuck in this for another month at least. So you've got to be able to leave, and there are resources out there. So that, that would be my message. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to add on to that because it's something that we've both overcome in our own ways. Uh, And what helped me was to know the difference of what love is. A lot of people say they love you, but they will do terrible things to you. And if you really take a minute and define love, what is love? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is blah, 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 blah. And you will know them by their fruits, not by their words. You know, if an orange tree tries to say that it's a apple tree. Right. Not. It's an orange tree. And it's going to continue to be an orange tree. It's not an apple tree. So don't believe what they say. Believe what they do. Find truth. Hold on to truth. Identify what love really means. Hang on to that. Know that you do deserve to be loved. You're a beautiful child of God. Mm -hmm. No matter what or where you came from, or what you've done in your life, you deserve to be loved. If God is being used against you, this is a, this is a touchy one, but if God is being used against you, or scripture is being used against you, you have to get clear on who God really is, Mm -hmm. and who is he as a father, who is, who, who does he say that you are? So if you've got somebody saying the words, but treating you a certain way, and or speaking these kinds of things about you, and using things as something to twist yeah. over your heart and over your mind, then you're going to have to rebuke those and, and stand on the truth. God would say, what are the kinds of things that God would say to you? Right. What are the kinds of things that God would do? So that can, re- that can like cut off the lies and the cage of lies that somebody else is trying to do when they're coming in God's name. That's, that's a great point because a lot of people will – you know, our past doesn't define us. Everybody's made mistakes in their past. And if you are with somebody that keeps trying to bring up your past and what you've done and why, Mm -hmm. and that's the reason why nobody's going to love you, you're never going to find any better. Well, as we know, God forgives and you can be a new person in God any day you want to wake up and be that person. So Mm -hmm. if somebody else is still trying to tell you who you are by things that you've done in the past, like you said, you can rebuke that. Um, that's not who God says you are. So to know who you are, that's who you are in God. And that's what you always have to look for. It's not 
what you've done in your past because God has a whole nother future for you if you choose that. Hmm. So I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> I love that. That's good. It's I mean, and only, only he knows our future. I know human being knows our future. So why the heck should we ever listen to anybody who says what our potential is? Why should we listen to any, anybody that says, this is who you are and who you'll always be. You don't even know my heart. You don't even know the weird thing I just thought about you. You have no idea. You have no idea. So you can't tell me. And so my over, when I was coming out of my situation, I had to re put God as my foundation and re shift where my identity came from. And with the logicness, I'm very practical of no human knows the future. So why should I believe them? Right. God say that I am. And standing on that, that I was able to make decisions to not get in with those kind of relationships again. And when right. one poked back up, I was able to identify it and say, no, that's not going to be part of my life. I don't attract that anymore. That is not my future. I do deserve to be loved. And here's the truth. Yeah. If doctors told me that I would not walk again, something physical that doctors should know. And God said, no, you are going to walk again and you're going to compete on the best stage in the world. Well, then God, you know, God can do anything. So somebody might tell you you're not capable of something. You're not capable of having a better life, a better relationship. That's not true because like you just said, nobody knows the future. Only God knows the future. And that's what you have to rely on. Right. If you need to get out of your situation, please do. Uh, staying is not going to help the kids. Uh, it's not good for them to see generational cycles of abuse. And it's the same thing. It's not just for people being abused. You know, if you're not being abused, this doesn't apply to you. It's who are the people in your life that you need to cut? What is the poison that you've got to get out of your life during this period of time? What are the ways that you are leveling up? Like we all have an amazing excuse now to change. True. No, everybody will believe you. Finally, normally everybody's like, I don't believe it. This is fake. This is fake. Finally, you can say, nope, I shifted during the virus. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you did. You know, everybody's life's being changed. Looking for the opportunity. There yeah, you go. Right there. there you go. There you go. So what are some opportunities that you're seeing right now uh, sweeping the earth? What are some of the new innovations that you're seeing? Everything's going online. Everything. Um, everything that we used to do in person, <laughs> meetings. Uh, interviews, Zoom calls, events, everything is going online. I mean, that is honestly and obviously the biggest trend right now. So it's like you need to think about your business if you, in the past, you've never done anything online before. Well, now is the time to learn while we have the time and figure out, okay, how can I expand my business through taking it online or delivery services or anything you can take advantage of in this time. It's just about looking for those opportunities. It's like we always talk about. Yeah, something I've seen you be really intentional with is your social media. And we've talked earlier to people who cut out all social media, cut it all out. But if you're looking to grow a business, if you're looking to influence the world and change them or help change the world, if the yeah. world lives here, including you, yeah. whoever it is, I have probably talked to 12 people in the last week that, that had that. And it's, if you're looking to shift the world and you've got a gift and you've got a business, it's got to be here somewhere. Yeah. Got to be that social media out. That is the biggest tool you could possibly use. And it's free. So if used correctly, if used correctly. True. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say about 90% of the opportunities in my life comes from my Instagram. It sounds so stupid, I but <laughs> well, I'm intentional with it. We're intentional with it. We talk about, the right things. We talk about what I, opportunities I want to grow in my life. We talk about health, fitness, business, being a force for good. And what's been beautiful about being that intentional, which again, I've seen you be really intentional with yours, is really lining up or to attract the right people. Because if somebody thinks I'm a certain way or I'll do like a shady deal, shady real estate deal, they'll be able to get on my Instagram and know who I am and that I would never do that. Right. They'll know I'm not even going to fall for it in the beginning. So I love that. So I'm in a place yeah. where we're not allowed to go to the grocery store. Yeah. And I know that it's been more complicated wherever you are in the world to get to that. So no processed food is really difficult if we're trying to stock up for potentially not being able to go for a long time. So what are the kind of healthier options that can be stored? Yeah. <clears throat> like good, good things are like rice, beans, 
lentils, quinoa, those things can store for forever and they're healthy for you. Um, you mac and cheese? Mm, no, no, not mac okay. and cheese. That's like, <laughs> if you're dying, you can eat that. <laughs> but, but no, no, you're not going to feel good on mac and cheese. Um, other things like canned meat, like tuna, chicken, salmon, you can get canned meat. There's your protein right there. Um, and that's like the most important thing, as we know. Um, you can also get like uh, almonds, like any kind of mixed nuts, nut butters, those things store for forever and they're healthy fats, they're good for you. Um, if you can't get fresh fruit, which some fresh fruit will store for a long time, like apples, uh, berries, things like that. But if you can't get that, you can get dried fruit um, as well. So that's just a few things that you can look for. Ooh, dried fruit. I hadn't even thought about that. Mm -hmm. Do you know any vitamins that would help with, you know, I've seen, I've seen a huge spike in depression, anxiety, obviously immune systems, people are needing to know to fix that. Do you have any recommendations for vitamins that would help with those issues? Yeah, um, and it's also, it's very similar to a lot of the same vitamins that help with immunity that also help combat uh, depression, anxiety, all of that. So like vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, and also something that you don't think about a lot is zinc. Um, so zinc, yep, zinc is a huge immunity booster. Um, I actually take it every night just for muscle recovery, but now I'm finding out that it has more benefits than just muscle recovery. Um, it's great for your immunity too. Um, so those things, they build your immunity, but they also keep you healthy. So you're going to have less, um, depressed thoughts and anxiety and things like that, because again, you're fueling your body with the right things. Right. Um, you can get all these vitamins from food too, like vitamin C, vitamin E, you can get all that from food. The only one that you might want to supplement is a uh, vitamin D because a lot of people have issues absorbing vitamin D just from food. So that's one that you can take with meals and then also a good multivitamin. I mean, everybody needs a good multivitamin. So that too. What are the biggest shifts that you're seeing specifically in the fitness industry? And what are the opportunities that are available right now? People I've seen um, from social media a lot, especially I've seen people just figuring out ways to get their workouts done. Um, the gyms are closed. So you've got to find a way to make it happen. Just like when I couldn't squat or deadlift or do things a certain way, I had to figure out ways to make it work no matter what. And honestly, relating this to home workouts, people think that you need heavy weight to make progress. You don't. I saw the most gains and like the most progression in my body when I started slowing down on lighter weight and using mind muscle connection to really engage muscles. So slowing down connecting your mind to your muscle. And I think that's what a lot of people are doing. You can do that with lightweight. You can do that with bands. You can do that anywhere with minimal equipment. And I've seen, I love seeing everybody post their home workouts on social media because they are getting creative. <laughs> but, yeah. I saw one tag on the Nashville Fit Show Instagram where this girl, she's like, I am competing. I don't care what anybody else is doing. And she's over there leg pressing a couch. And her kids are crawling around, her dog's walking by. And like, these people are relentless. They're making it happen. <laughs> I love that. You got to make it happen. And so the people that are thinking outside the box, you know, they're going to be ready when the show mm -hmm. comes. And the people that are just, you know, have that victim mindset and sit, sitting at home like, oh, you know, what can I do? I can't go to the gym. So there's, there must be no way to make this happen now. I yeah. mean, so they're just going to quit and they're going to fall off and they're going to miss out on some opportunities that they have to be even better than they were before. Something so. you always kicked my butt in is, you know, we all have two options and you either have reasons or you have results. And I am a very busy entrepreneur. I have five companies. I work internationally. I've got nonprofit work. I do the disaster stuff, yeah. but fitness and health are really important to me. This is yeah. the one vessel I get to live in. I've told you that. And as a friend of mine who helps keep me accountable, because that's what friends do, mm -hmm. is she just says, hmm, sounds like an excuse. I'm like, <laughs> across the world, this hurricane, blah, blah, blah. And I can't, I'm on a plane. She goes, sounds like an excuse. And it doesn't matter. Like, and I'm like, you know what? If I really wanted to, I could figure it out. And so I started taking bands that you can get online. You don't even need them, but I, I take bands and I take them to the airport. I'm going to basically live in an airport. 
I'm going to work out in the airport and I don't care if I look, I look crazy because I never have to see these people again. So I'm over there lifting my waist, my stuff, and finding a way, not an excuse. I love that about you. Exactly. And a lot of trainers too um, are adapting in this time by offering online, you know, online training, yes, that they can still, you know, to hold you accountable, but also tons of free workouts. Like you can look at every trainer's Instagram right now and their website, and they're offering free resources just to help out on wow. top of offering their services, you know, one-on-one -on -one online. So there's no excuse. Like there are resources there for you, whether you have money or not, you just have to want it and find them and use them. So. Do you post free workouts? I do. Okay. Where <laughs> on do my you find those? Instagram at Whitney Weiser Fit. Awesome. So I try to post at least one a week on my main page, but I post like two or three a week in my stories on Instagram. So awesome. That's great. Whitney, when there's a world pandemic sweeping everybody's life, what matters now that didn't really matter before, in your opinion? Health. People took it for granted if they were, you know, moderately somewhat healthy, they took it for granted before and the people that weren't healthy just didn't care. Well, now we're seeing a shift in that because if you're not healthy, you're going to, you're going to not only get this virus, but you're not going to be able to overcome it. You're going to be in the hospital hooked up to a ventilator because you can't breathe. So, and you're, you're going to be alone in the hospital. I was just, I, ha I follow so many nurses on Facebook and Instagram and everything. And they're like, this is not a joke. You guys, you have to take care of yourself. You have to treat this seriously because if you come into the hospital, yeah, the nurses, everybody will take care of you, but your family is not allowed to come see you. You will yeah. be in there alone. So take this seriously. And I mean, now more than ever, I think people are finally starting to realize this is not a time to compromise on your health. You've got to be intentional with it. You've got to eat the right food. You've got to move. Even if you don't want to do strength training workouts, get outside, walk around away from people, not near people, but walk around, be active. It's, you know, you only have to be active for maybe 30 minutes a day. Even if you want to go for a walk, just get your heart rate up for a little bit. It's going to boost your mood. So it's going to fight depression, anxiety, but it's going to make you healthier. Um, you can need to drink your water. There's little things that you can do that go a long way in improving your health in the long run. So we're all, there's some people who are kind of crash, uh, trying to get healthy real fast. So I love that. I'm, I'm all about listing off tips and advice because I love checklists and feeling like I'm doing it. So moving 30 minutes a day, getting outside, getting that vitamin D, yep. uh, eating healthier. We talked about the quick and dirty on that is try to stay away from processed foods yep. and stick to meat and veggies. Yep. I'm going to say protein and veggies, maybe a little yep. less, less, yep. less killing of animals, preferably. <clears throat> What did you say? Lean proteins. Lean proteins. Yes. Uh, the next one you said water. water. How much water should we all be drinking? So this is going to differ for different people, but I usually say the amount of ounces is half your body weight. So if you weigh 130 pounds, then you need to have at least 65 ounces. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 65 ounces of water a day. Now that is a minimum. That's like bare minimum. I do a gallon of water a day, which is 128 ounces or more, just because that's what my body's used to. So I have no reason to change it now. It doesn't mean everybody needs that much. It means I do. So I shoot for a gallon a day, but you definitely don't want to be under 64 ounces or so, which is half a gallon. So that's a good kind of frame of reference. I feel like you've actually told me this before where I said, okay, if you could give people one piece of diet advice, like just one, that's it. Where to start? You said drink a gallon of water a day. It'll flush your body out. Water. It'll fix all your little systems. It'll get yeah. junk, you know, that doesn't need to be there anymore away. Your body yeah. is already made 60% of water. So it needs water just for your circulation, just for your digestion, for every bodily function that you have, you need water. So that is, that's, I'm glad that you listened to me. That is my number one tip. <laughs> I do listen to you. Yay. Yes. Okay, water. so we've got, we've got being active at all. Mm -hmm. We've got eating the right food, preferably not processed, yes. lean proteins and veggies. And we've got water. Is there anything else? Sleep. Crash, 
crash off. Oh, sleep. <gasps> I hate this one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and it's, it, you know, everybody struggles with it at times. But now everybody's at home. So you shouldn't be out running around. So seven to eight hours a night. Some people will argue they don't need seven to eight hours a night. Some people might need six hours. Okay, whatever you know that you need, just get it. Um, because that is also going to play a huge function in your brain function, how you think, um, positive thoughts, having more positive thoughts and not mm -hmm. being depressed. Because if you don't get enough sleep, like how irritable are people if they don't get enough sleep? The last time I competed, I got second place. <laughs> And my trainer was like, it's because you didn't sleep. I'm like, really? He's like, it's because you didn't sleep. That's your recovery time. You need it. You have to have it. Yep. That's important. It's a game changer. I have since slept more than I'm used to. And I have seen a huge, I know, I hate to admit it, but I've seen a huge, huge just energy shift and the ability to think clearer and the ability to recover faster and like, when I, when I am intentional, like shift my body, you know, it's, it's been good. It has yeah. been good as annoying as it is for those of us who don't want to do this. I know you and, just want to keep working all night long, but you'll be way more efficient during the day. It's true. You get sleep. When you joined the G-Force Mastermind, tell me why you joined and how have you enjoyed it so far? Oh my gosh. I've loved it so much so far. Um, so the reason that I joined is I want to make a huge impact in the world um, and figure out how to make my passion and my purpose, you know, all align with that. And I know that I couldn't do it by myself. We all need people pushing us. And that's why I joined uh, because it's just a, it's just a supportive group of well-connected people that are all ambitious. They're all purpose driven and they all want to make an impact. So that was my biggest reason for joining and I love it because I'm learning so much every week on our calls. I love them so much. Good. Oh, you know me. I'm going to ask you, what are your top takeaways so far from the group, from the call, from the, from the mastermind? So on the first couple calls, looking for the opportunity in this time, which I've enjoyed so much uh, because you know, we're, we're all kind of isolated at this time. And this has been like my support group and just you and everybody else thinking outside the box to look for the opportunities and what looks like one of the most devastating times ever to most people has been like so inspirational. And so one of the things that we talked about is stocks and looking at the stock market. And I have been like obsessed with learning about it. <laughs> good like ever since that you mentioned it and you kind of broke it down on our first call i have been like doing so much research and like looking at all the stocks and i've been watching them and how it works every day and i didn't expect to learn that from being part of g-force but it's just part of looking for opportunities in these crazy times and i'm learning so much about the stock market it really um, I don't know. You like, I found a new passion in me. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I think that's been interestingly, I asked somebody that question yesterday and they said, we've gone from one stream of income to eight streams of income because we're locked in a house. We can build our coaching business. We can build our e-courses. We can build our apartment complexes. We can build our building business. We can build our stocks now, like, again, I'm not giving specific stock advice. We're talking about what are the opportunities and how to at least start looking at these things. Right. And they said, this will be, this is the one group I did not think would ever say this ever. Cause they called me crying the first time, like crying, we are going to lose everything. La la la. Like this is so stressful. And they said, we will be no less than 10 X what we've ever been in our life because of this. And because of the kind of things to me, what I love about the calls is we're collectively adapting new filters to look through. You know, we can look through the filter of the news. This is going to be horrible. You know, we have to understand what's going on so we can plan. But where is the opportunity? Knowing it never goes away. It only switches places. Mm -hmm. So I love hearing from you and what you're seeing as opportunity, what Andreas is seeing as opportunity, what Jeremy is seeing as opportunity, what Anil is seeing as opportunity. I, I love them because I'm like, God, I never even thought about that such an awesome collective group and so i'm so happy to be part of it yay okay this has been awesome mm -hmm. if you have one thing you could say to our audience as we part 
what would it be? Two things. First thing is take your health seriously. Be intentional with your health. If you don't know what to do, hire somebody. There are tons of online trainers right now, and most of them have cut their rates in half, and they're offering lots of free advice. So it's not an excuse now. You've got to take control of your health. Um, number two is mindset. Mindset over everything. Mm. You've got to have the right mindset. You've got to be talking to the right people. You've got to be supported by the right people in your life. Um, just like you, my friend, and G-Force and everything, I'm around positive people. So I'm getting these positive influences every single day. And anybody that is negative, they just, I don't respond to their negativity. And so they kind of drift out of my life because I don't want that to sit in my mindset and drag me back. So surrounding yourself with the right people that are going to pull you forward and not pull you back is number one, most important thing right now. Awesome. Thank you so much. Love having you.